good morning to all in today's class we will be seeing another important and very interesting topic the e plane t junction so in the diagram you can see there are three ports in a e plane t so this is port number 1 this is port number 2 and this one is port number 3 so for better understanding you can assume it like this so in a e plane t this is port 1 this is port 2 and this is port 3 so the lines of electric field will be positive in one port and it will be negative in the other port so if i am going to give an input through port 3 i will get a positive output at port 1 and if i am going to apply a same apply an input at port 3 i will get a negative output at the, at port 2 suppose if i am applying 5 volt at port 3 at port 1 i will get plus 5 volt and at port 2 i will get minus 5 volt so my magnitude remains same but my phase changes so this is the main thing we want to remember in a e plane t so we can write you know s i j so here the second term j represents the input port and the, the first term i represents the output port so here we are going to give get the output through port 1 which is given from port 3 so it will be positive and if you are getting output from port 2 it will be negative minus s 2 3 so this is the first condition we want to remember in a e plane t so in e plane t there are three ports so first we can write the s matrix of e plane t we know s matrix will be always in the form n cross n here we have three ports so we have a 3 cross 3 matrix so first we can write it yes equal to yes 1 1 yes 1 2 yes 1 yes 2 1 yes 2 2 yes 2 3 yes 3 1 yes 3 2 yes 3 3 so now our prime aim is to find out the various s parameters so how can we find these s parameters that we can see now we can take port 3 is perfectly matched so that means if you are giving an input through port 3 it comes only across port 1 and 2 nothing is reflected back in that case yes 3 3 is equal to 0 you can you can mark this one as 1 you can mark this as 2 you can mark this as 3 then from the symmetry property from the symmetry property yes ij is equal to sj that means if you are changing the input port and output port things remains the same so now we can see here s yes, 1 1 input and output are same so we can't do anything s yes, 1 2 s yes, 1 3 now come come here s 2 1 so s yes, 2 1 and s yes, 1 2 both are interchange so we can write s yes, 2 1 is equal to s yes, 1 2 now s yes, 2 2 we can't do anything here s yes, 2 3 here also we can do anything then s yes, 3 1 s yes, 3 1 is same as s yes, 1 3 so 
so s31 is equal to s13 then s23 s32 s32 is same as s23 so we can write s32 is equal to s23 then we have s33 we can do anything here so mark this one as equation number 4 we can apply equations 3 and 4 in equation 2 so we can write s is equal to s11 it's s11 itself s12 s13 s21 it's nothing but s12 s22 s23 and s31 s31 is nothing but s13 s23 s32 is nothing but s23 s33 s33 is 0 so we can put 0 here now mark this as equation 5 now apply 1 in 5 so first equation says s13 is equal to minus s23 it can also be written as s23 is equal to minus s13 so wherever you have s23 you can change it to s13 so here you have s23 here you have s23 change it to minus s13 so s is equal to s11 s12 s13 s12 s22 minus s13 s13 minus s13 0 so this is our new s matrix so here we can see s11 it is an unknown s12 is an unknown s13 it is here 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 so four times s13 is there so s13 is an unknown then s12 we already written s22 is an unknown so when we are starting from here we have nine unknowns now by using these conditions we have reduced it to four unknowns now our aim is to find out these four unknowns and to replace it in their positions so now we can use another property called unitary property unitary property says s into s star is equal to i i means identity matrix now we can write the same equation s so the same equation s11 s12 s13 s12 s22 minus s13 s13 minus s13 0 into s11 star s12 star s13 star s12 star s22 star minus s13 star s13 minus s13 star 0 is equal to 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 so that's identity matrix now to this we can first find out r1 c1 r1 c1 means row 1 into column 1 then we can find what is row 2 into column 2 then we can find what is row 3 into column 3 and we want to find one more row 3 into column 1 so first we can find this row into column 1 so s1 and the s1 and star you can we can write it as modulus of s1 on square plus modulus of s12 square plus modulus of s13 square is equal to 1 so we can write this as equation number 7 now r2 is to row 2 into column 2 so modulus of s12 square plus modulus of s22 square plus modulus of s13 square we are taking modulus so negative changes to positive 
is equal to 1. So, market execution over 8. R3 is 3. So, modulus of S13 square plus modulus of S13 square is equal to 1. R3 is 1. Row 3, uh, this one, the last one, row 3 into column 1. So, S13 into S11 star minus S13 into S12 star is equal to 0. Equation 9 and equation 10. So, by solving these four equations, we can find out these four unknowns. So, first we can equate equations 7 and 8. So, we can see both are having same RHS. So, we can equate them. So, S11 square plus modulus of S12 square plus modulus of S13 square is equal to modulus of S12 square plus modulus of S22 square plus modulus of S13 square. So, S11 square it is not there. S12 square is here and S12 square you can cancel it. S13 and S13 you can cancel it. So, we have S11 square is equal to modulus of S22 square. From this you can write S11 is equal to S22. So, this is one relation. Now, from equation 9 we can take this S13 square plus S13 square. So, you can write it as 2 into modulus of S13 square is equal to 1. So, modulus of S13 square is equal to 1 by 2. So, from this you can write S13 is equal to 1 by root 2. So, we have got the value of S13. Now, we can take equation 10. So, in equation 10 you have S13 and S13. You can take it common. S13 into S11 star minus S12 star is equal to 0. So, both are equated to 0. S13, you have a value for S13. So, S13 cannot be 0. So, only this term can be 0. S11 star minus S12 star is equal to 0. So, we can, no need of considering this star. So, we can say S11 minus S12 is equal to 0. So, therefore, S11 is equal to S12. So, we have got this relation. So, we have got the value of S13 and we have got uh, some relations S11 is equal to S22 here. And similarly, S11 is equal to S12. So, if we find out S11, the whole matrix is found out. Now, we can use this condition in equation 7. So, we can mark this one as equation number 11 and this one as equation number 12. Now, we can apply 12. We can mark this one as equation number 12 and this one as 13. So, we can apply 12 and 13 in equation 7. So, modulus of S11 square plus S12 square. S12 is nothing but S11. So, again modulus of S11 square plus S13 square. So, 1 by root 2 the whole square is equal to 1. So, 2 into modulus of S11 square plus 1 by 2 is equal to 1. So, here 2 into modulus of S11 square is equal to 1 minus 1 by 2. So, 2 into modulus of S11 square is equal to 2 minus 1, 1 by 2. So, modulus of S11 square is equal to, you can bring this here, so you will get 1 by 4. So, S11 is equal to 1 by 2. So, we have got the value of S11. And we know S11 is nothing but S12. Similarly, S11 is nothing but S22. So, now we have got the value, we can just substitute it in equation 6. So, our final
scattering matrix s is equal to s11 which is 1 by 2 s12 it is also 1 by 2 s13 s13 is 1 by root 2 s12 1 by 2 s22 1 by 2 minus s13 so minus 1 by root 2 then s13 1 by root 2 minus s13 minus 1 by root 2 s33 is 0 so this is the scattering matrix of a e plane t now we know the reflection d is equal to scattering matrix into the incident wave so we can write it like this d we have three parts so b1 b2 b3 is equal to s 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 1 by root 2, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, minus 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0, into A, A1, A2, A3. So now we can form three equations here. So B1 is equal to A1 by 2 plus A2 by 2 plus A3 by root 2 b2 equal to this row into this column so a1 by 2 plus a2 by 2 minus a3 by root 2 b3 equal to this row into this column so a1 by root 2 plus a2 by root 2 so we have three equations we can give them some names so it is uh, 13 this one we can write it as 14 so this one is 15 this one is 16 and this one is 17 so here we can apply some cases so the first case case 1 a1 equal to a2 equal to 0 and a3 is not equal to 0 we can apply this condition in equation 15 to 17 so b1 is equal to a1 and a2 are 0 so these two terms become 0 we will have only a3 by root 2 b2 equal to a1 a2 are 0 so these two terms will not be there we get a3 by root 2 b3 equal to a1 and a2 is 0 so b3 equal to 0 so from this what can we understand a1 and a2 are 0 which means we are not going to give any input across 1 and 2 a3 equal 0 which means you are going to supply only through 3 so in that case you will get output across b1 which is positive and the output across power 2 which will be negative nothing is reflected back ok so we can see the second case a1 equal to a2 is equal to a and a3 is equal to 0 which means we are going to give same input across port 1 and 2 and for 3 through power 3 we are not going to give any input now we can apply these conditions here so b1 is equal to a by 2 plus a by 2 which is equal to a similarly b2 equal to a if you are applying b3 a by 2 minus a by 2 so that is 0 which means if you are giving input same input through port 1 and 2 you will get zero output across port 3. Okay, that's all about E plane T. Thank you.